Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Josh sent me a notice of Steve Chuckett's story out of Indiana involving defective vehicles. And of course, my mind immediately goes towards the Lemon Law. The question is, does that apply here? It's an interesting question. So from WDRB, Indiana State Police facing repairs after buying dozens of defective Dodge Durangos. More than three dozen Dodge Durangos purchased by the state police there were taken out of service after experiencing problems with oil leaks. The ISP said in the news release Monday that it had been replacing its fleet of Dodge Chargers with 2023 Dodge Durangos last year. Agency ordered a total of 516 Durangos at an approximate total cost of $25.8 million. 219 have been issued to troopers for patrol duties. Since then, 39 of them have experienced a mechanical failure due to a defective oil cooler. And the ISP is now expecting the mechanical failure to surface in an additional 40 Durangos for a total of 79 anticipated failures. ISP is estimating that approximately $3.9 million of equipment may not be available for its intended use, according to the press release. The superintendent of the ISP has spoken with the Chrysler rep, but was not given a timeline to resolve the matter. A fully equipped... Dodge Durango, as the ISP has them, costs approximately $50,000. And during the month of May, ISP had 15 Dodge Durangos experience the oil cooler failure with an average downtime for engine repair or replacement of four to eight weeks. Now troopers are losing confidence in the vehicles as they're forced to swap out defective ones for backups. The ISP has used Dodge as their primary police vehicle provider for the last decade and a half, is unfortunately found ourselves in this precarious position, the man said in the release. We're having to sideline brand new vehicles, losing out on their value and functionality. The citizens and taxpayers of Indiana are being shortchanged and deserve better. Now, like I said before, the question is, what does the Lemon Law say about this? And you might say, who cares? Well, it does matter. Because you're going to have a breach of warranty claim, no matter what. I'm sure these things came with warranties, right? In a breach of warranty claim, you can sue somebody for what the breach of warranty cost you. And it could be a diminution in value as to how much value you lost because of the defect. It could be the cost of repair if you had any cost of repair. But unfortunately, the consequential damages, that is the stuff you suffered along with the defects, such as downtime, might not be recoverable because those are usually excluded by the warranty itself. And they're allowed to do that. So you you start looking around, well, what else can you do? Well, the Lemon Law says that if you buy a brand new vehicle and it suffers from some serious problems in the first year you own it or some other time frame, it's often different from state to state, you can often demand that they buy it back from you or replace it with a brand new one that's not defective. And you can get your attorney fees paid. So when Josh sent me this, my first thought was, well, in Michigan it wouldn't be covered because in Michigan it talks about a consumer buying a car and a consumer being covered. And in Michigan, a consumer is a person who purchases or leases a new motor vehicle for personal, family, or household use. Personal, family, or household use. And that is not what the police do with these cars. So in Michigan, the Michigan State Police buying cars would not have Lemon Law coverage. So my first thought was, well, that's quite common, that language is. But I went and looked at the Indiana Lemon Law and discovered that the Indiana Lemon Law has some different language. It says, as used in this chapter, a buyer, buyer. And so the person who buys something is covered. And it doesn't say they have to be using it for personal, family, or household use. It just says a buyer is a person who, for purposes other than resale or sublease, enters into an agreement or contract within Indiana for the transfer, lease, or purchase of a motor vehicle covered under this chapter. Now, it's possible that the courts have said that a person is an individual and not an organization. That's possible. And that's the kind of thing where a court would have to interpret that. Uh, I did not see a definition within the statute itself of what a person is. And so quite often they will define their own terms as necessary for the statute and then leave the other ones for courts to decide. So if a buyer is a person who buys a vehicle for certain reasons or other, uh, then the question is, is the Indiana State Police a person? 
And I, I can see a court saying no, and I, I can also see a court saying yes. Wh why would they not be entitled to this? So it does say, as used in this chapter, a motor vehicle or a vehicle means any self-propelled vehicle that has a declared gross vehicle weight of less than 10,000 pounds and is sold to a buyer in Indiana. So there's no question that the state police are buyers, but are they a person? So that's, that's the thing there. But they're certainly going to have warranty coverage. And so this is the kind of situation where an organization comes along and buys over 500 vehicles from a company and then discovers that there's a whole raft of problems in them, which suggests it wasn't just one bad part or two bad parts. It sounds like there's something inherently wrong with the way these things are set up. And it could be that they're being put to such heavy-duty use that they need some kind of different oil cooler or something. That's a possibility, too. We'll get there in a second. But the point is that they sell them these vehicles, 500 of them, and possibly 79 of them are bad, requiring service that can take weeks at a time. Uh, that's really, really bad for public relations. So if you are Dodge, you need to have a rep down there who is doing everything he can, or she, to clean this mess up, whatever you can. Because it's kind of hard to say, oh, this is something you should just put up with to have 70 vehicles you just recently purchased go through massive engine repairs. That's not right. And you can imagine where somebody might say, gee, after going through this, when we replace the fleet next time, we might change manufacturers. And so there is another warranty that I don't talk about as often, but I've mentioned as an express warranty, right? That's the glove box warranty, an express warranty. I talked about warranties of title. I sell you something, I'm warranting that I have the right to do that, and I'm transferring good title to you. Implied warranty of merchantability. And then there's the warranty of fitness for a particular purpose. And so that means that when I sit down with somebody who is a seller of goods, and I say, I have very specific needs. I'm looking for a thing that does this. And that person goes, I can help you with that. I understand your issue. I know exactly what you're looking for. You need this. And they sell me something that doesn't do that. You can actually go after them for violation or breach of the warranty of fitness for a particular purpose. If you can show that you had a particular purpose, you made it known to them, and they said, yes, we can do that for you. And I'm, I'm putting this in plain English for you. And then you relied upon their promises to work with you and do what you need there. And this is a perfect example because presumably somebody sat down with somebody from Dodge and said, we need 516 police vehicles. And a lot of those are cruisers, which means that they will be running possibly around the clock. Just day and night, day and night, day and night. They're also going to be driven at high speed sometimes. They will also sometimes probably spend long times idling. They will probably also have all kinds of electronics plugged into the system, much more than where a person's got their phone charger plugged in a cigarette lighter. And the person who's selling the vehicles, I'm willing to bet you said, guess what? We have the vehicle for you. A lot of police departments use our Durango. They will suit your needs. And so the Durango doesn't suit those needs. Breach the warranty of fitness for a particular purpose. It's in the UCC. I didn't make it up. <laughs> now, unfortunately, the various warranty claims, not Lemon Law, just the various warranty claims, do not allow for the recovery of attorney fees and court costs necessarily the way the Lemon Law would. And that's the primary distinction between the Lemon Law and the breach of warranty claims. Because each of them speak to the same things with respect to what you need to have. But the Lemon Law gives you a bright line and says this much time in the shop or this many repair attempts in a certain time frame, that vehicle is a lemon. So if you came into my office at Steve, I've got a brand new Dodge Durango. It's less than a year old. And the oil cooler failed. I took it in for service. They've had it for six weeks. That's a lemon. That's a lemon. They're going to be buying that thing back. Unless they, can, unless they can fix it really, really fast when I send the last chance letter, which they probably can't. 
And what's funny is that in Michigan, there are very, very, very few reported Lemon Law cases from the Court of Appeals. But if you look up a case called Ayer, A-Y-E-R, Ayer versus Ford Motor Company, you'll see a case where somebody had a Ford truck, took it to a dealership, needed a new engine. And they said, well, it's going to be a while because we've got to order a new engine. They wound up buying it back. And so this is a fascinating situation. And the bigger problem here is if I were Dodge, I would have sent a high-ranking official, I'm talking about like a VP or something, down there to try to start doing some diplomatic work to say, hey, look, it, this is very, very unusual. We're going to take care of this. We're going to make sure that you're not going to look back on this experience and go, never again. That, that, that's our goal. What can we do? And I would take care of it that way. But as of right now, that's a lot of vehicles. They bought 516, and maybe as many of them as 79 could have profound and serious defects. And those are state police vehicles, which is not good. So there you go. Josh, thanks for sending it. From WDRB. Indiana State Police facing repairs after buying dozens, dozens of defective Dodge Durangos. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The older I grow, the more I distrust the familiar doctrine that age brings wisdom.